Good evening and welcome. I'd like to call this workshop special call board meeting for January 15, 2020 to order. This is a meeting of the uh, Board of Trustees, San Felipe Duro CISD. Madam Secretary, would you call roll? Yes, sir. Mr. Contreras? Present. Mr. Renato Webb, Ms. Conrad Webb, here. Ms. Haynes? Here. Mr. Mesa? Here. Mr. Overfelt? Present. Mr. Smith? Present. Myself. So there we have a quorum. Thank you very much. Let the record show that we do have a quorum of board members <coughs> and that this meeting has been duly called in accordance with the Texas Open Meetings Act, Texas Government Code Chapter 551. This time we will have opening ceremonies, first with a moment of silence for personal reflection, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. I don't see the flag anywhere. <coughs> Thank you very much. First order of business, we have <coughs> 3A, Facility and Operations, Irene Cardwell Elementary Renovations, Construction, Dr. Carlos Rios. Mr. Mesa, members of the board, uh, before I begin with a brief uh, presentation, I, I just wanted to make a couple of notes. Uh, first, I wanted to uh, recognize Mr. Peña. He's an architect that has worked on various plans for Cardwell. So as we move forward, if, if there are any questions, then he can certainly answer. When we first presented a plan for, for Cardwell, years ago, we presented duplicating a campus like Calderon on the Cardwell side, and that was one of the plans. And then we also presented an extensive renovation plan uh, for the existing cardinal. And then most recently, we presented a limited renovation plan. But the reality is that you know, as an option, it could be any one of those plans uh, if the board was to choose to have the pre-K program remain at Cardwell. So that, that's why he's here. And uh, in all the work that we've done, I always uh, uh, am mindful that it just takes a whole team to put this before. So I, I, I want to recognize Ms. Sandra Hernandez. Every time we have change or a plan, she puts it together and, and she does it in a way that's very understandable. So thanks to the team, and especially to Sandra. Uh, we'll continue. Um, what we're going to discuss today is just some options for Cardwell, uh, the future re relocation of a pre-K program, remind us about the uh, lease bond revenues, and then hopefully have a, a rich discussion uh, to move us along in terms of, of what we're going to do. If we remember, the last plan that administration presented was to have Cardwell relocate, or, or, or the pre-K program, relocate to North Heights Elementary. Um, and we also had the uh, discussion about renovating or constructing on, on the existing site or a combination of, of, of the both. But we really didn't discuss too much about what was going to happen. And hopefully, uh, we want to just focus in on some of that information. If we consider the pre-K program relocating to North Heights, uh, we have to consider that there will be an increased enrollment to the elementary schools to the south. So the question is, okay, why would that be, why would that happen? At North Heights, right now, the capacity for North Heights Elementary is over 750 because it is a large campus. So at 22 to one, it does have a capacity. Now it has an enrollment of 609 students right now. But in, in, in the redesign of, of the attendance zones, when we build a new elementary, even though we're gonna build it for 750 students, 
The reality is, is that in the north side of town, okay, although it's quickly growing right now, it wouldn't fill up at 750 students. It would fill, it, we would have approximately between the new elementary and Buena Vista, we would have 1,000 students. So it's safe to assume that the enrollment at each one of those campuses, it's gonna be 500. So in reality, uh, Buena Vista currently is at 758. So we're taking 250 students, and that's what we're providing housing for, but we're removing North Heights, so we're removing 609 students. 609 students, and we're only placing 250 over there, stands to reason that we had 350 students that we then have to place, and they're North Heights students. Because of the transportation, we end up pushing them south because now we have to take, put students at Garfield because that's just where the room is. Garfield students then go to either a combination uh, Calderon, Lamar, and, and uh, uh, Chavira. So until the, the enrollment would adjust, whether either there's less students in the South, uh, the, the projected enrollment numbers does have those campuses growing uh, anywhere from 100 to 150 students. Calderon would go from 767 to approximately 700. Ruben Chavira from 481, very small, very successful campus to 650. <coughs> and um, uh, Chav uh, I'm just going Chavira, 481 to 650, and Lamar from 514 to about 600. That's the only drawback of moving to North Heights that then we would create a bigger enrollment in the south of, of, of the city, which in the last couple of years that hasn't happened. And we've worked with a demographer. The only way it wouldn't happen is to have an extensive transportation system uh, to, to bus kids from the south to the north, and then we move away from that uh, neighborhood concept. So we don't want to do that, so then enrollment increases. But again, I want to reiterate, that is the biggest drawback, everything else, remodeling restrooms, that sort of stuff, our own staff can do that, and, and there's even some grant money available for that, okay? So moving Cardwell pre-K program to North Heights, the only drawback to it is that it increases the enrollment of the schools, the elementary schools in the South, okay? Um, if we consider renovating or constructing, again, we can go anywhere from building a brand new campus at Cardwell, and borrowing money to do that, all the way to having just different types of renovations, whether it's a minimal plan that I presented to you all last time, or increasing to where it duplicates space for space to what they have right now. It's just a difference, anywhere from 10 to 14 million, depending on what we wanted to do, okay? However, the drawback on this is that we incur a debt for 25 years that then we end up paying from operational uh, fund from an annual budget. It's not passed on to the taxpayers. This we pay year to year. Uh, and that is the drawback there. Um, we can borrow anywhere from 10 million to 14 million. We've worked with our, our finance department to see, you know, would we be able to make this payment? And, and because of what the payment would be anywhere from 586,000 to 815,000 per year, we know we can make the payment. It would involve maybe having one less remodel in, in, uh, at one site, uh, maybe doing one less uh, program somewhere, uh, but through a combination of cutbacks, we could make the payment. Uh, so in, in our uh, study and, and review of the program, before I go, there's, there's really two basic questions. Now, do we want to deal with larger enrollment at certain campuses or, or move away from the neighborhood concept? Or do we want to incur the debt of, of uh, anywhere from 586,000 to 815? Those are really the two essential questions. I know that as an administrative team, district-wide, you know, we can make either option work. It, it really uh, comes down to what do we, uh, as, as a, a team of board members and administrators and community members, want to move forward on. 
Uh, again, uh, for any questions having to do with anywhere from just the basic remodel plan that I gave you all to a, a, a full reconstruct, the architect has done all that work and, and he uh, can help if, if he has any questions. I did tell him there might not be any questions for him, but uh, he, he chose to be here, so we appreciate that, sir. I'm now gonna go back up to the front for any discussion that the board members may have, okay? Mm -hmm. Mr. Rios, can you um, can you not come up here? <laughs> Sorry. Uh, and the only reason I say that is because maybe we want to go back and look at okay. some of your slides, so unless sure. you want to bring it and see it. So yes, sir, absolutely. That, that Mr. Smith, you want to proceed with questions? So if you go back to your to your population chart, and and so you know we've talked about the cost of of, we're, we're talking about cost of, of reconstruction, but does this have a cost to it to move um, pre-K to North Heights, and, and does it cost more or less? I mean, is there something that you've got to do to equip that facility to support the smaller yeah, population, yeah. and and yes. what would that look like? And the the only cost, aside from any remodeling that we would that we would already be planning to do to North Heights, the only cost is uh, retrofitting the restrooms to have lower sinks uh, and, and, and lower urinals and, and just lower toilets. That is the only cost. The furniture, you know, we could swap the furniture that, that <coughs> exists at one campus to the next. If there's a significant access points to North Heights for, for buses or for vehicles, uh, that is the only cost, and in, and obviously a whole lot of manpower because <laughs> we have to move a lot of furniture. But but our maintenance department is is uh, very equipped to do that. And in visiting with the uh, pre-K program, the Head Start people, uh, they've indicated that we can apply for grants to remodel restrooms, uh, retrofit restrooms. So there is going to be a cost. It's, it's not gonna be a, a, a major cost. Uh, we're not talking about too many restrooms, and, and we're certainly not talking about adding restrooms to classes where they don't exist. Uh, and any remodeling that we do, again, we, we would go after those uh, grants that are available. Okay, and then any reoccurring costs that would take, like a Calderon from 567 to 700, that would, that's just, Money is moving from one campus to the next. No, not any real reoccurring increase. No, sir. The money will follow the students. So if, if Calderon would ex increase by 125 students, their budgets would increase, and, and, and obviously the North Heights budget wouldn't be there anymore, so it would be distributed. <coughs> okay. At, at this point, I have. Uh, Mr. Contreras. Dr. Rios, uh, can you go back to the slide where you have the buildings, the blueprint? basically. So that is the actual Irene Carter will right now. Yeah. No, sir. If, if you look at the dark gray area uh, at, at the bottom of the screen, that is just a design that incorporates new construction at the, at, at the bottom in the dark gray that includes uh, administrative offices and, and the cafeteria. And then the light gray those two hallways that go up with a, with a center rectangle in dark gray, that is a remodel, remodeled classrooms to have enough classrooms for what they have right now. And then the center area, uh, if, if, I don't know if you can see the mouse, but this center area right here, rather than build a gymnasium, uh, we talked about just enclosing that area to have a uh, air conditioned covered area where they could uh, have indoor physical activity. Uh, we also have the cafeteria in the back that could uh, uh, serve as another enclosed um, recreational area with, with some retrofitting. But, but again, th this was just a, a basic plan to show the board that, that we could do something at a limited cost if the choice was to, to stay there. Well, and, and the I, um, I'm asking for this is because whatever can be salvaged and retrofitted and used 
that's fairly new, that's not mobile, because I, I understand there's some mobile units on there, right? That, along with the $10 million borrowing, because that's in today's numbers, that $586 payback per year, right? Yes, sir. So looking ahead for the next several years, I mean, while they might seem quite a bit, but as, uh, as we progress in the following years, that 10 million, looking 20 years, because I, I see 25 year payment, right? But it, it, it doesn't, doesn't seem right that it's 25 years, 10 million. Um, are, are those numbers correct? And then it's the same amount, 25 years for so many, can you go back to that slide if you don't mind? Which of these two slides? Yeah, it, that one, that one, that, that scenario right there, that 586, that's in today's numbers. So what could we do with that 10 million on the current site that could encompass brand new a building? I mean, because it's. Uh, the, when we, this, this building that's designed there, uh, we did the study on 10 million would fund that, sir. And, but the reason that we put the additional 11, 12, 13, and 14 million dollars here is because that's, this plan here is a very basic plan. It doesn't, uh, it provides a, a room for room for students swap, but it doesn't provide uh, the square footage that's used for offices and conference rooms. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why in, in considering some of the questions that the board members had since we made the last presentation, we said, you know, the architect can design whatever we ask him to design. Obviously, anytime we add square footage, we're adding dollars. Uh, the, what you see in white over here on the, on the top left hand of the screen, that involves keeping the library um, and the resources rooms there. And these two classrooms here that started out being science labs and now they, they, have, they use them for different purposes. But it allows, uh, it, it maintains that. 10 million only provides for this remodel here and this new construction over here. What's an actual slab there? What's sitting on an actual slabs, cement slabs out there? Because everything you see on the screen is, if it's there in light gray or white, it already exists and it's on an actual slab. None of the portables are, are present here. The, the portables go away. Okay. Because I don't want, I mean, I, I see the, the idea of leaving, but I don't want that to be another mothball and just sit there and, and just like all the other schools that we've been sitting there and they're there just sitting around. I mean, let's turn the page and try to use what we have and invest that money, I mean, it, and, and do as much as possible to what we have and, and maybe move them temporarily, but come back and, and, and have these kids and give these kids a brand new building. I mean, uh, classrooms and stuff, and build on what we have that's actually south, you know, can be safe. The, uh, Mr. Contreras, uh, the idea for this plan is that nobody moves, uh, and that, that we, um, you know, the, the contractor does the construction that needs to get done over the summer, builds barriers, and that we continue to use Cardwell until, um, until they transition entirely uh, to the new building. The, the, it, there wouldn't it, be a safety issue to that? No, there's, there's plenty of space at Cardwell where they can move around and, 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 and uh, it, it'd be safe. It, it wouldn't be easy, but then the high school just went through that and we finished a very successful remodel project there. But the idea is that they would remain here and we would work around it um, and, and, and it, it's, Knowing that they're little uh, three and four year olds, the barriers would be firm enough in case one of the kids wandered off, they couldn't get into any of the construction sites. Uh, but the, the goal is that if we move to North Heights, then when we open the new elementary school, that's the same time that, that Cardwell relocates to North Heights. Th that same oh. August, all of this happens. If we build on the existing Cardwell, well then, it, it, the transition is smooth because they remain there. So, so either plan, it, it has to coincide with uh, the construction of, of the new elementary. When we open the new elementary, if we move to North Heights, that's the same August that Cardwell moves to North Heights. If we open the elementary 
and Cardwell's gonna stay, uh, Pre-K is gonna stay at Cardwell, well then we're just, we're just keep working on it and we may or may not be done, but everybody's still there. Okay, and, and that's why we have to keep discussing this because if the choice is to move to North Heights, okay, then that's gonna happen at the same time. If the choice is to stay here, okay, then, then we play with a little bit of time and, and we create a smooth transition, smooth construction plan, maybe not as aggressive as building the new campus because it's harder and slower to remodel, uh, but really the, just to, to focus the work of, of, of the team of eight, the real issue is do we borrow the money and, and go in debt for 25 years uh, but maintain neighborhood schools with small enrollment or do we not borrow the money and then we go to the increased enrollment at, at the schools in, in, in the South. That's, that's the issue and, 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 and I just, I, I, I was kind of hoping to focus the discussion on that because that's the issue at hand. Do we, do we go into debt but build something nice for Cardwell or, or, or do we just say we're gonna go to North Heights and let's start planning on a good transportation issue so that if we have to build our transportation fleet, we have two years to do it uh, what is it that, w that, that we do? Uh, and, and really, I, in my opinion, in our study, that's the focus of the conversation. Do we go into debt, or, or do we start planning for, for the enrollment that we would have in, in, in the South? Can I, can I ask a couple more? Mr. Smith. And this may be, I don't know if this is for you or him, I'm not sure, but it, in, <coughs> related to the financial structure of, of Head Start and, and tied to kind of a little bit what I was alluding to a minute ago when you're when you've got if, if we were just to pack up that and move it to North Heights what would that do to that budget that head start budget is that separate or what it, is, there's no there's no debt tied to, to North Heights and there's no added increase utilities or yard maintenance or whatever that would just be moving from one to the next so that'd be a flat deal it's flat the, there's the the budget for cardwell stays the same if anything and moving to north heights does have some room to increase enrollment okay. uh, so if anything we would have more space for some pre-k students okay. the nec next question would be uh, if, if you if we were to go, do, if we were to agree to go do, and I think my, my, my opinion is leave the kids there, don't disturb, uh, and, and do something from a new construction or a renovation there on site. But you take that $500,000 or whatever the number was uh, a year, uh, pay back in debt, that, that number, that comes from Head Start money, or it comes from the district, or what is, where is that? No, sir, that, that comes from our operating budget. Comes from our operating budget. It has nothing to do with. Correct. That's so, it. so if I was if I was to, to <coughs> be presenting the budget to the board for the next year, I'd have to allocate for a payment of this much money. Yeah. So then I would have to say certain things like, okay, we were planning on investing X amount of dollars in renovating uh, this, that, or the other. Okay, I'll carve some money out of there, and, and, and maybe we'll be one hundred and fifty thousand dollars less in, in, in uh, renovating. And if we were going to give a one point eight salary increase, maybe we're giving a one point six salary increase. We'd have we present different options to the board to make up that money. It's very doable, but it does it is coming from our local budget. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, at the end of the day, I think. We, we've already had the big emotional discussion about well, we're gonna we're going to uh, ignore the two million dollar a year savings as it would have been described to us to go to Lamar, uh, and 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 go with this option. So I'm confused about that whole thing. How it's going to be, you know, not it's going to be a wash if I go to North Heights, but it's going to be a two million dollar savings if I go to Lamar, but. At the end of the day, I think we've already made the decision we're not going to move, right? And from my point of view, agreed with that. So we just, we were talking about which location. <laughs> but 
question. Mr. Contreras? The, the only other concern is if we do plan to move, what's the traffic? I mean, it's saturated as, in, as it is now, moving additional kids and families up to going to North Heights, then we create, I mean, we look at Lonnie Green, they have traffic problems. You have the high school, we got traffic problems. Freshmen, and now we're adding North Heights right, right down the street with additional kids. And so it has to create an additional traffic problem. In, in this case, it wouldn't, Mr. Contreras, because in this case, we're going and we're, we're shifting the enrollment to the south. We're removing 600 plus students from North Heights and we're only adding approximately 500, or we're replacing the 600 with only 500. Now, how many elementary parents versus pre-K parents pick up the students? Again, that, that would be part of the study that we do between now and then and, and see how we uh, have a, a plan to manage it, but you would have less students in the center of town if pre-K, the pre-K program went there. I just don't know how many has, uh, who has more kids being picked up. I would imagine that very few pre-K students walk to school, whereas we have a significant number that would walk to North Heights right now. So you might have, it might be a wash on the traffic. So what about uh, transportation costs? Because you're, you're bringing that back into the subject, which makes good sense. So the, the, the dominant population of, of the Head Start program is in that San Felipe side of Discuss. The, the dominant population for the car roll program is, I would, I would venture to say that it is in the uh, south of the railroad tracks across, but then you have a pocket in Cienegas and a pocket in um, uh, Escondido States behind uh, Calderon. Uh, the, the, I think that the transportation issue, there isn't no savings. But there, I, there would be, you'd be flipping one for the other. You'd, you'd in, based on what you just said, you would either increase cost or time or both. If, if, you, if your dominance is south and you're moving that population north, so for those 500 kids, you're gonna in, either increase or a combination of both cost and. It, it would be a, possibly a slight increase. It would be an increase if I want to remove elementary kids, uh, in other words, let's say that we didn't, going back to the argument of increasing transportation in the South, I'm sorry, increasing enrollment in the schools in the South. If I wanted to bus kids all the way to Buena Vista uh, uh, to, to alleviate some of the enrollment in Calderon, then that would increase the cost because then I'm going all the way South. But in this case, I'm moving kids that are transported to Cardwell over this 10 blocks transporting them to North Heights. Probably a slight increased cost, but not too much in that case. And the, and the same question tied to uh, the grade school kids that would be migrating south, the transportation costs equal same, more or less? Uh, th that would be a, a slight increase because now more kids will qualify for transportation because I'm taking kids outside of the two mile radius. Uh, or crossing more uh, uh, major streets. So uh, I would increase the cost. I wanna give everyone an opportunity for discussion. This is an item for discussion. So if we could just come this way and then if we have other questions. Yeah, just to be through. clear, I'm not trying to get in anybody's way so that we're no, clear on that. No, no, no. Okay. I I'm just wanna make I'm sure. I'm asking questions. Okay. No, no, no we'll, okay. we'll come back and I mean, we'll have plenty of time. It's for discussion, so. Um, I'll open it up for anyone else. Uh, yeah, you can mm -hmm. um, my concern listening is moving, let me think about it. The increase of the schools, I, you know, I, that's, that's a big, that's a big increase. So that, that, that's my, that's my concern right there is the increase to the other schools. So, oh, who did you say the last one? This one. Lamar, Garfield, right, and Rose, and Chavita. It, it, it's mainly Lamar, Chavita, and Calderon. Okay, the, the so 
you look at Ruben Chavita, that's 481 right now to 650. And that's and a that's big th jump. And then you have Calderon increases by 140 kids, mm -hmm. and uh, Lamar increases by about 75 students. But Lamar, uh, Lamar only increases by 75 students because they really don't have room to increase by much more than that. Otherwise, we'd alleviate a little bit of the enrollment at Chavira. Right. Uh, but yeah. But that's my concern. That's not having too much. Of that. that was my listening and and transportation and. That, but what stuck out was the increase of the, of the students in the classroom. Yes. That's what, that's what, <laughs> that, that's what I had to work with, so. And that's a legitimate concern, because we, we've had that in the past, we have to adjust personnel, like cafeteria and so forth. Right. Thank you. Ms. Gonzalez? Yeah, that concerns me too. And also when I, I went to certain campuses before the bond election, <coughs> especially at Cardwell, and though they were kind of more or less okay with the proposed move to North Heights, they were also wanting to know whether they couldn't just stay there and at the campus and, and have another uh, school being constructed at the same time like they did in North. And that, even though they said even if they move to North Heights, what's gonna happen to this campus? We still have to address the campus anyway, either way. That's what I'm saying, I'm more inclined to still go, and I wanted to do that at the beginning of when we voted, is to go ahead and construct a new Lamar, uh, Cardwell campus while the other campus, the, while the campus is still going on. I have a, a friend for something for the construction going on, but keeping the people there. That's what I, that's the thing I'm up. That was my point. Thank you. And, and I have pluses and minuses because first of all, I think the top priority was security and in looking at the proposed design, all the hallways would be enclosed, all the areas would be enclosed, which would be a, a great thing for our students because they're out there in the, in the weather. Um, the other thing is there's been so many improvements done to Cardwell that I also agree with Mr. Smith and uh, Amy and Ms. Gonzalez in regard to keeping the students there. Um, while we construct and renovate some of the other buildings that are there. Some of the buildings uh, have been recently built in regard to libraries, uh, science labs, and so forth. Um, I'm also concerned, uh, I, I don't recall the interest rate that, that we, we had on the amount. Um, I would have to, uh, I would have to go refer to last uh, month's presentation. The, uh, if I recall, it was somewhere around 3%. 3.04 rings a bell. Mr. Arona, would you happen to have that anywhere, sir? Okay. Okay, which wasn't too, too bad. The only thing is, you know, we can't, it's already water under the bridge. You know, we can't call, you know, for, for another bond. I mean, we were glad that the bond that we had passed, but, um, you know, this is the difference between you know, the bond where the state pays 48%, you know, we pay the remaining. So it's gonna be a cost on us. But my preference would be to have the students stay there at Cardwell, uh, not disrupt the faculty, the administration, the program. Um, you know, we just had a phone audit and it, it disrupts the environment, you know, quite a bit. And, and not only that, I think, with parents having to <coughs> drop off their, uh, there's a lot of parents that pick up their children and, and drop off their children. So um, I would prefer that students stay there. Uh, the big pluses are the safety factor. The fact that there'll be an enclosed area for uh, playground use, just like a gymnasium, and everything would be enclosed. Uh, we would not have to retrofit any of the other buildings. Uh, if you look at the, the playground and there's canopies over the years that were out there in the, in the just the hot sun and now canopies are there. A lot has been purchased in regard to playground equipment. So my preference would be we go for this, that we have the students remain at Cardwell. 
while the construction is going on and the renovation. But I'll move it on to Mrs. Wood. I agree with a lot of what has been said. I've been at most of the campuses, starting with Calderon, that was up to 700, 750. At one point, their classrooms, their science labs were turned into classrooms and the stage turned into a science lab because of the over-enrollment. So I've had to deal with that. The same thing with Ruben Chavira when they're overcrowded. So I understand thinking of lower enrollment for each campus because it helps with student achievement. But when I also look at the Cardwell site, and I believe that Dr. Rios and I kind of visited this, and when you look at the map, if you bring up the map, if you look to the left of the library, that area that is not gray, it's kind of just dotted off, that is the area that's used for about 11 bus monitors and mental health and disabilities coordinator, which is the counselor. Uh, in the new section, we have a small office for the counselor, which is not suitable because this is not an elementary counselor. So those are areas that were renovated when they first moved to that site. So that's something that might be considered to keep that wing uh, along with what we have and you don't have to add any more costs to what is already uh, showing there. Uh, another thing that was discussed was possibly keeping the, the cafeteria because of the fact that, and Mr. Mesa alluded to the fact that we just had a review uh, audit and a lot of the review audit deals with parents and parental involvement on that campus. So they have a lot of training for parents and that the cafeteria can be used for trainings, not the cooking area, that's one of the worst places on that campus. So there's things that can be kept, but what's off of, I wanna say 9th Street, I believe those are portables that will probably be demolished or torn down. Uh, those are the things that we have to look at, but I am in agreement with keeping them where they are, renovating and making sure that the smallest students in the district and the foundation for all learning has the best foundation that we can give them because that's gonna be the future for our students. We have to bring, build that strong foundation. And that's my Thank you. Mr. Oliver. everything that's that's going on there when we talk about going in and, and moving the populations south they're into uh, Calderon or, or, or Lamar uh, there you know let's say Calderon increases by 125 more uh, students uh, that's more traffic in one of the worst areas uh, of Delro because of the middle school sitting right behind it uh, there so you're adding not necessarily 125 more cars, but you know, more traffic into that area. Um, Lamar <coughs> would increase uh, as well, uh, and that's more traffic on both waters and the climate. Um, we know that they alternate pick up and, and drop off uh, morning and afternoon, uh, but Lamar is, is kind of really one of the last true, uh, aside from Summit North Heights, where a lot of the students walk to, and if you increase the amount of traffic in, in that area, especially with sixth grade being just a couple blocks down the street, um, my fear is people aren't paying attention and a child gets hit. And then the last thing I'll say, and, I, and I've said it since all the way back in February or March, is the data shows that small, smaller schools give us better grades. And, and Lamar and Tulare are the perfect example of that because they're the only two that have the, the their two highest ranked uh, elementaries in our school district, and they're all two of the smallest there. So I'd be in, in the mind of saying, 
keep it as it is. Uh, let's look at renovating uh, and, and keeping the kids there while it gets renovated and give them a new renovated with new um, buildings attached to it as, uh, as well for future development and like I said, this website it is going to ultimately the future of the school district. What's my need to there is we don't need to disperse and, and increase I'd rather go in and remodel and, and not add. Thank you, Mr. Rico. So we'll go a second round. <laughs> so Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith? The only you know, the only thing is I I think you got a pretty you got a direction, it uh, sounds like. Uh, then we, we figure out how to how to pay for it and and uh, maybe look at what the most cost effective way is to do that, you know, and I guess that's your next go around. So I, I in uh, to comment on that o over the next 30 to 60 days what we will do is i'll have uh, our cfo mr Arondo and his staff uh, look at uh, possible ways to cover the debt at the different levels i'll uh, i'll do another preliminary engagement with our architect mr Alvides, who's already the architect on that project and um we'll we'll um, design a program with different options. This is what you get for 10 million, this is what you get for 11 million, um, and, and then uh, have another meeting of this type, uh, maybe individual meetings with board members so everybody's in tune with it, and then eventually get our financial advisor, uh, Mr. David um, Gonzalez. Gonzalez. I have such a hard time with this last name. <laughs> but Mr. David Gonzalez uh, to drop some numbers and then we would bring it, uh, we would bring it to the board uh, for action. Uh, we have some time uh, just because in that scenario there wouldn't be any movement. So we don't have to have the remodeling completed at the same time that uh, the new elementary is being built. But as much as possible to, to honor all the programs, we'd like to move uh, as much in unison as we can. So with that direction, we'll engage in different studies uh, with the architect and with our finance uh, team and, and uh, provide some more information so that hopefully we can have some action within 60 days. Thank you, Dr. Rodriguez. Before we leave the podium, I just want to give other board members a, a second opportunity, which, you know, I know, I know I have one very important thing, is that you mentioned, for example, teacher salaries, that we might have to cut back on, on salaries. There are other sources of revenue that I'm thinking about, which, for example, pipeline money, the recent pipeline construction will add to, the, to our budget. Um, the wind farm situation, which is still pending. And then uh, also the, um, the mistake on um, the value uh, property value certified property value uh, regard to the appraisal district so there's other things that we can look at hopefully before we tackle reducing the teacher salaries yes uh, mr president and, and we know that that would be the last option so we would look uh, the cabinet would look at all of their programs and budgets just to see where we could hit first before we even consider that. Uh, right now, in visiting with, with uh, everybody, we feel very confident that our health insurance plan is solid. I don't see us having to add any more money for it in the immediate future. And I think that as our budget grows, if we grow that contribution, it won't affect anybody. So I feel very comfortable with that, but I understand the culture of, of, of the board and, and, and salaries would be the last thing that we would touch. And I, I want to give everybody another opportunity. I know Mr. Oberfeld had another yeah. question. Move. Let's work our budget down. Um, two things to touch on there. Um, I, I know we talked about salary there, and I think we need to be very clear because we, we, we kind of right now use the word reducing salary. We're not actually going to reduce anyone's salary. We're talking about salary increases in, in general. We're not going to go in and cut back what we're, somebody's actually going in and making right now because that would just incite panic, starting tonight, if, if somebody believed that. Just for clarification, yeah. that ain't happening. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, we're, we're just 
we're talking about what we would possibly give as a percentage increase each budget year. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, in, in looking at Google Maps and based on the, the map there, um, if we go the route eventually with adding on, there's going to be wings that we're going to have to that will ultimately abandon. Uh, there would that 10 million, 11 million, whatever would that also look at demoing those or are we going to leave them standing for the time being and just board everything up and, and cordon it off? No, no, so we've had, we've discussed different options. Again, until we're there, we won't know, but the more immediate option, uh, we want to sell the building behind churches. And uh, Cardwell, if it was going to be, uh, continue to be used for students, uh, that would be a perfect place to use those rooms as a records retention, because there, there's still good rooms, and, and the security, uh, security cameras, all that stuff would still be in place. Um, we explored moving records retention to the uh, Sam Houston building, but that that building, because it's nowhere near any uh, school district activity, we've encountered uh, some different disruptions there. So right now we don't feel comfortable about moving the records over there, but Cardwell would be a perfect site. That's just one option of, of many that we would at that point discuss. Demolishing is not, um, would it be uh, on the top five options? Anyone else? Well, uh, I just, thank you, sir. I just wanna pick up on what Ms. Silverfeld just stated because if we are going to look at record retention, how many rooms do you need for record retention? Just off the top of my head, I'm thinking that there are two portable buildings on 9th Street, and then there are permanent wings that have probably about eight classrooms each wing. So that's 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 classrooms. I don't think we need 20 classrooms for record retention. However, we do need to set aside some space so the demolition would have to take place at some point to allow for parent parking or some sort of parking <coughs> on, that, on that side of the, on 9th Street. Yeah, the, ar the architect will, will give us options for improved parking, improved traffic, uh, absolutely. And, and again, uh, it, it is premature for us to even begin to think about what we, what programs we would move there or not. Uh, that once we have a solid plan of what we're going to do, th then we'll begin that uh, that discussion. But uh, no, our this first is just priority food for thought as we're yeah. planning and, and looking to move forward, uh, just to have some ideas in the yes, in mind. Yeah, our first priority is going to be to service the students, uh, the teachers, and the parents there in, in all facets of, of campus life. I want to thank all the board members for this discussion. I think you know we pretty much said what we needed to say, and um, hopefully we'll come up with a good plan and, and proceed uh, once we have uh, the rest of the information. At this time, we will adjourn the workshop and go on to item 16, which is a closed session item. Um, we're permitted to go into closed session by the Texas uh, Government Code, Texas Open Meetings Act, 551 5.1.071, 5.1.072, 5.1.073, 5.1.074, 5.1.076, 5.1.084, 5.1.084, 5.1.084, 5.1.087 of the Texas Government Code. If a final vote is required, it will be acted upon open session. We are now in closed session. The time is 6.19 p.m. Okay, the time is 8.07 p.m. We're going to reconvene into open session. No action was taken in executive session. We're down to item 17A, <coughs> consideration to authorize the administration to proceed with a letter of intent and negotiate real estate purchase. Dr. Rios. Mr. Mesa, members of the board, it is the recommendation of the administration that the board authorize the superintendent 
to proceed with a letter of intent and negotiate a real estate purchase agreement for property 6A as described in closed session with the stipulations also discussed in closed session. We have a recommendation from administration. Is there a motion for approval? Mr. Smith, is there a second to the motion? Ms. Gonzalez, all those in favor, please raise your right hand. Motion carries unanimously. With there being no other business on the uh, agenda, is there a motion for adjournment? Mr. Oberfeld, seconded by Amy Haynes. All those in favor? Motion carries. We're adjourned. Good night, everyone.